Oh, well here. Uh, I think we are in Skyrim and we will be checking out three mods. Now unfortunately these are all mods that I've made because at the moment there's nothing this also is there's nothing too interesting. It's just by the fact that there is you know, there's nothing that I really think I really want to show off in the video directly. Uh not not a not without basically like messing around with my load order and this and that and the other and deleting mods or disabling mods and turning those mods on this and the other blah, 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 blah. so we're just going to keep it short we're going to keep it simple and we're going to be checking out basically two mods that you can download now i do not know what's going on with that dude over there though but two mods that are available for download now and a third mod which is a work in progress which as of the moment is not available for download but it is a work in progress and it's not the time house but so for the first one we will be going obviously we're here in solitude and the first one we're going to be looking at is the Le Javier Kissat company and so what this mod does the Le Javier, Le Javier Kissat company is it brings economics into Skyrim to a degree <laughs> uh, but basically the Le Havier Kissat Company is basically, in, in a word, a bank. And here it is. Here is the Le Havier Kissat Company. So this kind of basically, it's effectively kind of like a bank. Because, you know, I don't have any on me at the moment. But obviously, normally, when you get money, it doesn't hold any weight. There's no weight to money. So you can ca you you know you can carry around one million gold in your inventory. When was the last time you saw somebody walking around with a million coins in their pocket? You don't. So this is not so much for you know if you prefer convenience, this may not be necessarily for you. But if you like immersion. And kind of like that kind of like role play aspect of things, then this might be a fun one for you, because it you would have to think a little bit differently, because what this mod does, apart from many other things, is it gives gold weight. So now, so now for example, if I was to carry say, one thousand gold. My carry weight at the moment is, is at 179. If I was to carry 1000 gold, my carry weight then would go up to 199. So it adds on an extra 20 pounds or 20 grams or whatever they, their conversion rate for weight is in the game, I have no idea. But you know, it affects your carry weight because money isn't weightless. But I have also added in things that will help with dealing with that so you don't always have to get so bogged down. So right, right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually enter the Kiss at the Lehabia Kiss at company and I will explain more inside. Alright, so here we are inside the bank basically. Now there's obviously this is your lobby room. You know, uh, for example, you know, you can come in here and you know, you can see we have a woman up here. We have Mary Nara. Now, Mary Nara, she acts as a merchant. Yeah. You know, so you can take a look. You know, you can buy some stuff, but she doesn't have a lot to sell because this is only she's only been set as a merchant for play and convenience. Because she does sell three lots of en enchanted jewelry, each one different so you can wear all three of them at the same time if you so wish so a necklace a ring and a circlet which all increase the carry capacity by 50 points so if you buy all three you can obviously you increase it by 150 points which would be useful if you carry around a lot of money but why don't we do actually don't want to carry around loads and loads and loads of money you know, because you know, because you're role playing, say for example. So, what you would want to be drawn to are these two things here. Primarily, the shiny silver one. 
as you can see, set him access. So, now unfortunately I don't have any money on me. Because <laughs> I put it all away, because otherwise I would be overweighed, most likely. But basically what this is, this is cloud storage. You've seen it in a few other mods that other people have made, stuff like that, you know. It's that kind of thing where it, you can put items in a chest at the front of a house. And then you say go to the back of the house and activate the same container and all those items that you put in the container that was at the front are also in the same container that's at the back you know so it's cloud storage and so these things are in all the general stores in the game there are a couple of other there's a couple of places where they don't have a general store uh, like Dawnstar doesn't have one. Uh, Raven Rock does, but he doesn't. He doesn't sell his goods inside the building. He sells his goods outside the building. And Morphal doesn't have a general store. Uh, but in the description for this mod, it does state where they are. But you know, so for example, I could put money in here. You know, I could put an item in here, whatever. It didn't have to be money though. You can put whatever you want in here, technically. Uh, but it's primarily for mine. It's going to primarily use it for money. And uh, so basically, what you're going to what you can do is you can put, say, a thousand gold in here. You know, so obviously we're in solitude. You put a thousand gold in the account in your into your bank account in solitude, and then say, you know, you decide, ah, you know what, I'm going to go down to Riften for the day. I'm going to spend a day in Riften. I want to spend some money. Inside the general store of Rifton, uh, the pawned prawn, there is another septum access point. Open that up, and you can take out the thousand gold that you put in it when you're in solitude, and vice versa. So if you put it, say, when you're in Rifton, you put money into it when you're in Rifton, you could then come back up to solitude and take it out up in solitude. Or you could take it out when in Markov, or in White Run, or anywhere where there's a general store. So it's cloud storage, and so your money will be safe and fine, and nobody else can access it apart from yourself. Also with it, we have this, the conversion station. So in the conversion station, you can see we've got gold 50, gold 100, 250, 500, 1000, 5000, 10,000, 25,000. As you can see, we have Certificate of Wealth and Gold Bullion. So in some dungeons, primarily it will be Bandit Dungeons and Draugr Dungeons, you will find, every now and then, in randomised loot, either Certificates of Wealth, each having their own kind of value, or possibly, if you're lucky, some Gold Bullion. Of each one obviously again of a different value so you can take the item bring it to this conversion station now it's only the bank has the conversion station the you, you can't find the conversion station anywhere else it's only in the bank and then so let's say you find a certificate of wealth you read the note and it'll tell you that basically the certificate of wealth basically grants the holder 500 gold so you, t you bring that certificate wealth here come to the conversion station and you can convert that certificate of wealth into 500 gold then you can deposit your 500 gold into your bank account so that's basically what this primarily is it is basically primarily banking in skyrim I know it's not the most exciting thing in the world, I mean banking is pretty dead boring, but if you're a person who likes immersion, this may be pretty well suited for you. Now there is a bit more to this bank, but I'm going to let you lot decide what you want to do with the bank, because there may be some hidden treasures behind this door. You never know, you might decide to rob the place. But of course, as always, I will leave a link in the description below to this mod. If you want to try it out for yourself, um, now the goal at the moment 
current weight at the moment is 0 0.02. That's the gold's current weight. It doesn't say it because the uh, because I mean the game can't display it as 0 0.02, but that is the weight of the gold. Uh, but I have left in this in the description an example of how to do the math on how to calculate how much weight it's going to basically occur. If you just want to get a rough idea. But right. But of course, yep. As, as I said before, there will be a link in the description below to this mod if you want to try a light for yourself. Uh, so right, so that's it for the Le Havia Kissat Company. I'll let you lot discover and look around the rest of it for yourselves if you so wish. But we're going to move on to the second mod, which was more just of a little fun mod I decided to make. And for that, we've actually just got to go up to the temple. The temple of... I forget what it's called. Temple of the Divines, that's the matter. So yeah, Temple of the Divines up in solitude for mod number two. Alright, and here we are with mod number two. Which is Armament of the God King. So, this mod it was just a bit of fun. It didn't take too long to create. I just did it because it's like, nah, why not? <laughs> it's like, it's like, why not? <laughs> and so, if you watch uh, Shapeless Media, you know, you know they they are another channel that also do reviews on Skyrim mods. Uh, primarily, they just tend to do PlayStation now, I think. They did, they did used to do Xbox, but I think primarily just do PlayStation now. And basically, I just thought, why not, just for a bit of fun, we'll make a shrine to their character. Now, obviously, there you go. So, Shrine of John Cena. So, we've got the Shrine of John Cena. Now, he's taken over the placement of Talos. So... If you, but I will say, he's only taken over to the placement of the Shana Talos here. So it's, he hasn't, it hasn't overtaken every other Shana Talos, just the one in the Temple of the Divines. And so yeah, so it still actually works as an actual shrine, so you can still get a blessing from it. So, blessing of John enters your blood. So we can go down to active effects, and so if we have a look, let's see if we can find it. So we've got God King, uh, unfortunately I can't read that technically on the screen there, because it's way too bloody small, <laughs> but it fortifies barter, blocking, also fortify health, fortify magicka, fortify marksman, one-handed, restoration, shouts, sneak, Fortify Stamina, Regenerate Magicka, Resist Magic, and that's it. And that's all, you know, so it adds a, you know, gives you a few buffs on it. I mean, if you want, if you really want to, re if you really want to go immersive with it, you can just hit this here, and then there you go, you are literally praying to John Cena. But, you know, you know, yeah, he, he's classed as God King, but really, is he really a God King? You have to ask yourself. But the main point of interest for this, I would say, is actually this little lock box down here. Armament of the God King. So inside you will find the God King bow. Absorb as phantom points of health as Phantom points of magic as well as phantom points of stamina. Now all the weapons, there's three weapons, and they all do the same enchantment. But they are stupidly overpowered. Just in general. So at the moment, let's have a look. So at the moment, my dam the damage I'm doing is 44,250. So let's say, let's have a look. The God King Claymore. If I equip that. I am now doing 96,664. Now, obviously, that is going to also be kind of partially affected by any uh, anything else that I have that might also increase that, uh, which is not a lot. Maybe just a blessing, actually. I think it's only the blessing that will actually do it. Oh, let's take that ring off. 
Am I going to disappear? No, cool, right. So yeah, obviously the blessing is going to fortify that a little bit as well. On its own. Uh, we're also going to take the we're going to take the bow and we're going to take the sword. You know, let's just have a look. So if we equip the so with the sword, we are doing 176,945. <laughs> and if we equip the bow, we do two. Oh my Jesus Christ! <laughs> two hundred sixteen thousand seven hundred and seventy-seven damage. Nothing will survive. Pretty simple. Nothing will survive. But we also have the gauntlets and the boots and the armor. Which again is pretty stupidly OP. With the armor rating being at 955, or at least on mine, it's 955. Uh, I think the maximum you could actually set it to as a base rating is 600. You can't go any higher than 600. So after that, whatever. Obviously, it will then boost it upon that itself. Uh, but I'm not actually going to wear that because I don't. I mean, I'm, I'll I'll take it. I'm probably not going to use it, but I'll take it. I'll probably use it. I'll keep it for backup of emergency just in case if I get into a situation where, where I get a bit struck. But we also have the hand of God. Pull your enemies close and drain them with God's will. Hmm. So we're gonna. Learn the hand of God. Um, we're actually going to save it first because this is classed as a hostile spell. So if you start using it on people, they're not going to be excessively happy about it. <laughs> so, you know, do be wary about that. Uh, we've just got to find it now. Hand of God. Where are we? Hand of God. Maybe somewhere. There we are. Hand of God. So we've got the hand of God. Actually, you know what? Because we're going to test this outside. Because this is going to because this will work better outside than it does inside. <laughs> so we're going to go we're going to go mess around this outside. Okay. Well, I've just realised I've just done a whole segment and I wasn't really recording. Uh, so yes, you are going to kind of have to excuse all the dead people. <laughs> um, a lot has happened. <laughs> but right, uh, so basically I was just showing off the hand of God, which does this. It does that. And then you just grab launch. And then if you want to, you can, if you're lucky, you can double grab and double launch. And there goes Jari, and now he's stuck up there. But yeah, so this is basically what the Hand of God does. It basically, it's a telekinesis spell, but it actually also can grab people and animals. You know, it can grab basically, I think it can basically grab pretty much most things. It's not designed to basically affect objects. It's only designed to affect people, even if they're already dead. But it's much more fun when they're alive. Because you can smolt them. You know, create your own little space program. Why not? But yeah, so that is the Armament of the God King. Just a little fun spoof mod. Just, you know, for a bit of fun. Why not? So yeah, so there will be a link in the description below to this mod if you want to try this one out for yourself. And once again, excuse all the dead people. Uh, because I kind of fucked up a little bit. Alright, so we're going to move on to the last mod of the video, which is going to be a... It is a working progress mod, but it is currently not accessible or downloadable for you to play. Uh, so this is going to be, unless you are on my Discord, this is going to be basically a sneak peek at the final part of the Wanderer No More series. But before we do that, I've got to reverse time and tidy things up. Alright, and here we are with the final mod of the video, which is the Wanderer No More Scar N. So this is currently still a work in progress, and it's Basically, it's not available for download, so you can't 
so there won't be a link in the description to this one uh, as it is basically not available to the public just yet now obviously if you're part of my discord you would have seen like little bits of this and some of its development in a way so it's like through screenshots and stuff like that and uh, but i thought i'm gonna show off a little bit in this video and explain basically what else is going to be going on with this mod when it f gets released but it's still a bit of a way off but initially what you will find is you will see this blue ball here oh. but uh, i heard something go raw maybe it was the blue ball but yeah so you will find the blue ball and it's basically it's not too far away from dragon's bridge because just over there is dragon's bridge <laughs> so yes literally not that far away at all uh so yeah so all you gotta do is just literally just walk through and you'll end up in scar end all right and here we are in what is Skaren harbor now obviously since obviously this is a work in progress at the moment the nav mesh isn't done so obviously your followers aren't gonna be able won't be following just yet but they will obviously eventually follow in the final version but yeah so this is scar and harbor so you know it's a little enclosed off a little harbor area you know you got your little lighthouse you got your small little docks and you know and then you got some galleons this that and the other you know tra -la -la. Now, eventually, one thing that isn't obviously set at the moment, I'm going to need to sort of, like, get around to doing that. You know, bit, of, bit, of, bit of a pain in the butt, but I'll, I'll eventually get around to do it. Is that, it's not so much that there's going to be a crime system in Scar and Harbour. But it will work off the crime system for Halfinger, or basically Solitude Hold. So, basically, if you commit a crime whilst in Skaren, whether it be the harbour or the town or city, if you commit a crime, when you leave Skaren and go back, basically back to Skyrim, the Solitude Guards will then come after you. So there is, so then, at least then, there is, a, there is consequence to your actions, but it will be explained in a law friendly manner about it yeah so obviously still work in progress the main harbor itself is done there's just like a few little bits and pieces still left to do like little minor things uh the main thing being done that's being done at the moment is sorting out all the npcs which unfortunately it on this showcase unfortunately it doesn't look like they've loaded in but there will be some guards you know there'll be some guards doing patrols there'll be just some general npcs you know stuff like this and stuff like that you're gonna have a couple of them you know there'll be some merchants and you know all these like little things so it's like over here don't do obviously the door doesn't go anywhere yet for example but you know it's like this will turn into a guards barracks uh, hence why it's kind of set up in this kind of manner over here we're going to have a warehouse you know because it's going to kind of function as a small little like harbour area so it's a place of commerce and, like little bits and bobs like that you know you got a little bit of a farm you're going to have a little, you know, a little bit of a farm here hence why there's a couple of horses now the horses the horses themselves aren't rideable because they're not actually the one they're the horses that you would normally find at the carriages which those horses are never rideable you know, so you now we're going here, for example. We're coming here, we got a goat, we got some cows as well. And I think there's, I think there should be a couple more goats. But you know, it's a little bit of a farm area for that for you just to farm. Well, you won't be farming, but it's there for immersion's sake. You know, aesthetics and all that, and all that jazz. You know. You know, so you've got a little farm, warehouse, guard barracks, you've got a few watchtowers, you've got docks, you've got a couple of galleons. And if we come up to the like, central area up here, 
uh, you know, you'll have some, you've got a couple of market stalls, so these people will, there will be people here selling items for you. So for that, uh, this building here is going to be like a general store. Uh, a couple more watchtowers, you know, you come up through here this way, you know, leave here, come up to here, and you're going up here, you're going to have a, I guess, you're going to have your own little new tavern for you to go into obviously not right now because the interiors aren't done yet but you know you got the old sea dog here so you have a little tavern and then you'll go for this gate and this gate is what will take you to the actual city itself uh, but again the city hasn't even been started on yet so <laughs> that that won't be coming around for a little wee while yet you know, so this is, though it looks quite developed, it is still kind of quite early days. Uh, as I, again, I'm still making the NPCs, I'm still making the NPCs, uh, sorting out in the ways of, like, ownership, so there is, so crimes can be committed and have consequences. You know, and it's a few extra bits of bobs to make, you know, bring this place to life a bit, and this, that, and the other. La, la, la writing on a new lore you know there's a lot to do so there, it will be a wee while before this is out but you know i just wanted to give you a little sneak peek so yeah and then when it comes to the city itself you know there'll be shops there'll be shops in the city npcs guards home you know uh Residences for some of the NPCs, new other shops, another tavern, there'll be a new temple, uh, a place called the Citadel, which will actually effectively be a player home, so you can actually come to live in Skyrim if you wanted to, uh, you know, but there'll be new lore revolving around uh, the, the character Pri uh, and her sister, there'll be new lore around the tetra race itself uh there'll also be some new law about a newly added sort of like references to some other races that they that i'm uh, being brought in this that and the other you know la 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 this a lot you know a lot of lot of story a lot of law things to explore people to murder if you wish you know and just general kind of a whole new area to explore but one thing I will say is that in order to get this to work, so then, like, for example, if you've seen other world spaces before on PlayStation mods, and you've seen other world spaces before, you will know that a lot of the time, when, you know, say for example, you know, you're a certain distance away from, the, say, like, a... a, a a big mountain peak, like a mountain peak like that, or what? So that over there, it tends to fade away and disappear, and only tends to fade in and reappear when actually when you get closer to it. But as you can see, we're not having that problem with Skyrim. It's things are here; they're not fading away, they're not disappearing. So it's almost like Lord has been generated, except you can't generate Lord for PlayStation. So one thing you will come to realise is that if you look at the map, we are actually in, our, in the region of Solstein. Because we are technically down here. But if we were to go to Solstein and try and go over here, you won't be able to get the sky around because that's not the point. <laughs> you know, you're not supposed to be able to access it because Skyren it's supposed to be a heavenly place. So, but that's a way around the Lod issue. Which is, which, be very of a, and of a modder, who does a lot of ports, uh, has helped me out with that, in sorting, sort of that kind of aspect of it out, explained a few bits and pieces, and then, from what he's, to, from what be very of a has explained to me, I worked it out from that, and did a few little bits and pieces and got it to this state. So, thank you very much for that, Be Very Vey. But right, so unfortunately I can't say 
there will be a link in the description if you want to try this moth pack for yourself because there won't be because you can't because <laughs> uh, it's not publicly accessible just yet it'll probably be a wee while before it does i may upload it into work in progress once the harbor is more developed but it, that's all yet to be seen as of at the moment so i'm not entirely sure if i'm going to do that just yet or not but that's going to be it for this video so if you did like this video why not leave a like and why not subscribe to the channel to see what other videos I've done in Skyrim? Because you know I've got a quite I've got quite a fair few Skyrim videos up now. You know, so you can subscribe to the channel, you can check out my the Skyrim Revisited playlist, as well as some other older Skyrim videos, and some other videos of random odd games that I've just played here and there. And you know, for a bit of fun. But in the, the description to this video, there will be a link to my Discord where you can keep up with the progress of Skyrim if you like. You know, I'll be posting up updates on, on updates on the progression for Skyrim and any other kind of mods that I'm working on. And if you, and, you know, if you want to keep up with what 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 mods I'm making, Discord is the place to go for that. And so there will be a link in the description below to my Discord. But you don't have to just go on to there for mod updates. You can go on there to, for mod requests. Though the mod requests are going to be slowed down a little bit. But it depends on what the request is. It all depends on if I get around to it or not. It all depends. But you can know you can leave mod requests. You can leave mod suggestions for future videos. You can keep up to date with what mods I'm working on. You can ask questions about modern in general. You know, or just come and say hello. It's entirely up to you. You have that freedom and liberty to do that. But that's enough of me waffling on logging in it. So it's time for me to get out of here. So until next time, I'll see you all later. <laughs>